Hi guys, Grant here. In this video I'm going to uh, talk about merino wool, specifically um, some icebreaker and triple design watch caps or beanies. Um, I recently had a request to talk more about um, some of my icebreaker merino, so I'm going to try to get at least a couple of videos out about it. Um, for people who already know about merino, um, this information won't exactly be new, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the properties of merino itself before I go into uh, some of these specific products. So merino is uh, a very fine wool uh, made from uh, normally New Zealand sheep, but I think uh, certain Australian sheep qualify as well. Um, it has a climate regulating um, properties, temperature regulating properties. So if you wear it when you're hot, it should um, help to keep you cool. <clears throat> and if you wear it in cold environments, it should help to keep you warm. And that also has a, a little bit to do with being smart about um, the weight of the merino that you choose to wear. For example, a 100 weight, uh, like 100 gram or um, 200 gram, or, uh, sorry, 100 gram or 150 gram uh, would be great for like a t-shirt to keep you cool in the summer. Um, it helps to wick away the moisture very well. Um, as far as moisture wicking properties go, it's um, several times better than cotton. Uh, however, it's not quite as good um, at spreading the moisture um, over a large area and drying out as something like um, Under Armour would be their heat gear version. Um, however, that's, uh, that's basically wearing plastic. Um, there are a lot of reasons why you wouldn't want to do that. For one, even with the silver ions that they use, uh, Under Armour can develop an odor. Um, the protein in the actual merino fibers, the wool fibers, um, prevents buildup of odor. It actually attacks the bacteria that causes odor. Um, another thing is, you know, that's made from oil, the Under Armour, so uh, it's bad for the environment, whereas this is renewable. You're basically wearing a plastic bag if you're wearing Under Armour. And, I, you know, I, I would say that there are times where you'd probably rather wear that. I don't really um, think that Under Armour, even their, their thicker cold gear stuff is really that good for keeping you warm however I think it it works to trap the heat in um, so if you're active it works however I think merino is much better for uh, keeping you warm if you're um, being stagnant I guess if you're not actively generating a lot of heat yourself so um, now with a, a little bit of that out of the way this is the triple watt design uh, watch cap this is uh, an older version I think so I think this being here gives that away. I'd have to double check, but I think the newer one's slightly different, or at least it doesn't have that tag, maybe. I could be wrong. Um, so this is, uh, in the watch cap style, it's meant to be folded up, and it's a, a rib knit. Being a rib knit, it's going to um, be kind of a, a loose knit and allow a lot of air to pass through. Um, part of the, the properties that allow for Merino to keep you warm is that it it has a, it's, it's a high loft material <clears throat> and it traps a lot of air in between the fibers and um, a knit like this is going to do that as well. Um, it's going to have a lot of space for air to get trapped as an insulation layer. However, uh, being such an open knit, it's also going to allow a lot of wind to blow through. So if it's really windy, uh, you're definitely going to feel it on your head with something like this. Um, to look at an icebreaker hood, this is their pocket hood. Um, I actually keep it in the pocket of my stealth hoodie. That's why it's all uh, folded up like, you know, that's why it's kind of wrinkly. Um, one thing to note, not that it so, so much matters in a ho hood, <clears throat> But Merino will actually um, sort of work the wrinkles out on its own. If you have a shirt and you have it all balled up, if you wear it for a little while, the wrinkles will more or less go away. <clears throat> but this is a, a 200 gram hood that Icebreaker makes. And I think that the, the type 
or at least the way that they use their merino differs quite a bit from a lot of other companies. They seem to um, use very fine merino and they they knit it very finely as well. It's um, more of a close together tight knit like what you'd normally see with cotton, not um, the way that most companies use their their wool, which is uh, one of the reasons why I think Icebreaker is so successful and one of the best in the business. Um, it adds to the durability because there's um, fewer loose fibers sticking out to get caught and snag, tear. Um, it helps to trap the heat in. There's uh, less space for it to escape and um, being more densely knit it's also going to help a little bit more to keep the wind out although it's um, not specifically a wind resistant type of material. Um, this is the, like I said, their pocket hood. It's um, meant to be reversible. It's actually two layers of the 200 gram merino. So it's going to be a, a fairly, a fair bit warmer than this uh, rib knit triple watt design hoodie, or uh, not hoodie, but hood, watch cap. Having the double layers is going to help as well. It's going to double the insulation properties of this hood. Here is um, another icebreaker. This is their mogul. This is a much thicker material. It's uh, actually two layers of their 320 gram merino. So it's not specifically meant to be reversible. Um, the inside lining is a different color than the outside. But just the way it's stitched together and the way that um, before I cut it out it had a, a tag in here. It's not, it's not really meant to be worn inside out the way that the pocket hood is. But having two layers of the 320 gram merino will do quite a bit to keep you warm. It feels um, noticeably thicker and heavier in weight than either of the other two hoods. And they offer uh, several different styles and there are other companies that um, offer merino as well. If uh, someone were looking um, for a reason I guess to buy Icebreaker versus um, say Arcteryx, I know that they make some merino items or triple watt design. Um, I would say it'd just be due to the the fineness of the merino that this company uses. It's a lot softer to the touch than um, most other merinos that I've experienced and uh, that can make quite a, a bit of difference. Some people, um, it seems to vary from person to person and um, I guess brand to brand as well but some people find merino to still be itchy. Um, it has a lot to do with the way that the, the fibers are. Uh, the wool fibers tend to be kind of um, short fibers that want to go off in a lot of different directions and they come in, uh, the fibers themselves come in different weights just like the the actual way that the, the material is, um, the thickness of the material is gauged. It's actually gauged in microns so um, much finer merino wool uh, exists. Uh, different companies use different fineness of merino and that's going to um, determine a lot how it feels against the skin, whether it's a coarse merino, which is going to be a little bit more resistant to pilling, or um, a fine merino, which is going to be a lot softer against the skin. Um, just a, a quick tip, if you do have a merino that is pilling, a lot of uh, the companies uh, do a, they go uh, to great lengths in the way that they manufacture the merino to prevent that, but if you do, um, wash it with a pair of denim jeans, and that should take a lot of the pilling off. Thanks for watching.